Welcome to our later morning service. Now, one of the advantages of virtual church is that you can attend more than one service. So I quite often listen to the late morning service and then listen to the parish Eucharist later. So it's been really good to be able to hear different preachers. And we've listened to Ian at the parish Eucharist, but today for the first time, Ian will be preaching at the late morning service online. Shall we continue with prayer? Let's continue with the, the collect, which is the prayer today. And this is said by many Christians across the country. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. And now Justin will lead us as we continue to worship our awesome God. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for chapter 10 verses 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward and whoever welcomes a righteous person 
as a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, who is my disciple, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Look down from a broken sky, traced out by the city lights. My world from a mile high, best seat in the house tonight. Touch down on the cold black tile, hold on for the sudden stop. Breathe in the familiar shock of confusion and chaos. All those people going somewhere. Why have I never cared? Give me your eyes for just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. For the broken hearted, the ones that are far beyond my reach. Give me a heart for the ones forgotten. Give me your eyes so I can see again. 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 And again. Step out on a busy street. I see a girl in our eyes me. She does her best. Smile at me to hide what's underneath There's a man just to her right Black suit and a bright red tie Too ashamed to tell his wife he's out of work He's buying time All those people going somewhere Why have I never cared? Give me your eyes for just one second so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your arms for the broken hearted, the ones that are far beyond my reach. Give me your heart for the ones forgotten. Give me your eyes so I can see again. Yeah. Welcome. In today's very short gospel reading of of just three verses, uh, there is one word which occurs six times. I wonder if you noticed what that word was. Yes, of course, it was the word welcome. And if restrictions are lifted over the next few months, and by July and August we're and September even, we're able to go on holiday, then you may well be hearing that word quite often or seeing it written, the word welcome. 
For example, if we arrive at our destination airport, a great sign may well say, Welcome to such and such a country or such and such a city. When we go to our hotel, we'll also go to the welcome desk. And of course, there are little gestures all along the way in our holiday which will make us feel welcome. And basically that's what the word welcome means. It means that we are wanted, they are glad to see us, and they do not consider our presence to be an intrusion. In fact, the opposite, welcome. And so Jesus is teaching here in Matthew's Gospel that his followers must also be people who are warm and welcoming. I think to be welcoming is a sign of our transformed life that Jesus has made a difference. He says, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me, welcomes my Father. So as we bring other people into our lives, we are bringing Christ into our lives. And the opposite may be true, that as we keep people out of our lives, so we may also be keeping Christ out of our lives. And the reason why Jesus taught very much on the need to be welcoming is because to welcome somebody and to make them feel really welcome is an absolutely transforming experience. And that's what Jesus is into. He's into transformed living. For people to know that they are welcome can be such an affirmation to people to know that they are wanted. And if they know that they are wanted and valued by us, perhaps they will begin to realise it through us they are also welcomed and wanted by Jesus, by God. And this is part of our calling to be a ministry of welcome. At the moment, our church is closed for regular members as well as visitors. But once we're open again, we have a great privilege at St Mary's Porchester in that nearly every single Sunday, as we look out, there are always visitors in the congregation. And I wonder if our notice board, I wonder if our first impressions give the impression that people are really welcome. For example, is the notice board uh, clear in what it says? Um, is there a disabled entrance? Are the doors open? Are the lights on? And if you're involved in the ministry of welcome at the door, then your ministry is so important because first impressions are absolutely vital. And so a new person walks through the door, nervous, afraid, anxious, but you can put them at ease with a smile and a warm handshake, show them to an empty seat if the place is getting full and just make them feel generally welcome. No doubt some of you, like me, have had the opposite experience in churches. I remember when we moved down to um, West Sussex near Chichester in the year 2000, um, I decided that I would look for a church to attend. It's very interesting being on the other side. And uh, as I went along, granted it was mainly village congregations, uh, I can honestly say that in the first dozen churches I went to, I'll not say exactly where, but you can guess, I was not in the slightest bit made welcome. In fact, if anything, I was glared at as being a stranger. And how dare I come in and uh, upset the party? Who was I? Um, very, very suspicious. And even the vicars themselves, even the clergy, were not at all welcoming. Yes, there was a perfunctory, oh, good morning, handshake, nice to see you, blah, 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 out the door, next person, good morning. 
you know, there was nobody at all showed the slightest bit of interest in me, who I was, why I was there, where I lived. And so I made up my mind that the first vicar who made me truly welcome was the church that I would join. And it happened. The 13th church I attended, the vicar, rather than just saying good morning and then saying good morning to the person after me, said, uh, who are you? Um, do you live round here? Tell me something about yourself. Uh, and I thought that was absolutely tremendous. So I joined his church and uh, I hope I was a blessing to them and and a help. Of course, after church, when we have coffee and tea, that's also an opportunity for us to welcome people, to, to listen to them with our eyes and to hear with our inner ear uh, in such a way that they feel valued, loved and accepted. But of course, welcome is not just about the Sunday services. It's about our whole way of life from Monday to Saturday. The ministry of hospitality and welcome is something that we should exude uh, as followers of Jesus. So to invite someone for lunch or to a barbecue or to spend Christmas Day with you or even just to have a cup of coffee or tea in your home or to decide that you will meet up with someone in the precinct in a particular coffee shop. I'm not advertising any or invite them along to our tea room when it opens up. Uh, you know, sometimes that can have more of an impact on somebody's life than 20 sermons from me could have. Some people are shy and less able to manage social occasions. Not all of us are extroverts, and so there's something very deeply loving about sharing, and particularly with strangers. And a stranger could be someone that we don't really know all that well. We may know who they are, but we don't know much about them. Or a stranger could be somebody different to us who we do know. Uh, and they are the stranger. Which brings us to the next point, that Jesus in these verses says that we are to welcome everyone. Ah, there's the challenge. Not just the people we like or the people who agree with us. And Jesus mentions three categories of people, the righteous, prophets, and children or little ones. Well, who are the righteous? Well, the righteous are those who are in a good or a right relationship with God and with other people. And sometimes they can be a bit scary as well because uh, we feel that they may just be a little bit too spiritual, a bit too religious and may make us feel somewhat threatened. But do we sometimes make disparaging comments about them behind their back? Goody two-shoes, self-righteous, holy joes. Are we welcoming? Then there are the prophets. Well, we don't have many prophets around uh, these days. Plenty of false prophets. Uh, no, no shortage of false prophets, but uh, true prophets, we don't normally have too many of them. But prophets are not just people who tell the future, but people who tell it as it is. They tell the truth and they often make us feel uncomfortable. They often demand of us more than we're willing to give because they have the vision of what the church should be. And they don't want the church to compromise on lifestyle or mission. And truth tellers are hard to tolerate, especially when the truth isn't spoken in love. And yet Jesus says we are to welcome prophets. Then thirdly, he says that we are to welcome the little ones. Well, that might mean children. Do children feel really welcome in our church and in our congregations? Or does the little ones mean those who are young in the faith, those who are immature? It's challenging, isn't it? You see, it's easy to like those who like us and who are like us. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. That's not what being a disciple is all about, because that's easy. And with Jesus 
things are never always easy, but they're always good and they're always right. What about the phrase, all are welcome? Well, it's a while since I've had that put on a church notice board, <laughs> uh, because sometimes it can be rather superficial to read on a church notice board, all are welcome, as we have soon discovered, as we have joined that church and tried to become part of us. What it often means is uh, our sort are welcome. Our sort are welcome. Not your sort. You, you're not welcome because you're different and you have different views to us, but our sort are very welcome. And so they should maybe put that on the notice board. It always makes me slightly humorous. As you know, I'm of Irish ancestry and have spent a lot of time in Ireland, both north and south. And when you go into, for example, an Irish pub, usually in London or New York or Melbourne or somewhere, the Irish pub is usually always decorated with the tricolour, the flag of Southern Ireland. It has shamrocks all over the place and tapes of the Dubliners singing and belting out Irish rebel songs and glasses clink as the clientele sing heartily. If your name is Timothy or Pat, wherever you come from Ireland, there's a welcome on the mat. But supposing my name isn't Timothy or Pat, uh, supposing my name is Billy or William and I happen to come from the Shankhill Road in Belfast and because Northern Ireland is, I recognise, in the UK, then my flag is the Union flag and my head of state is the Queen. Uh, am I still welcome in your Irish pub? Or is it just one particular sort of Irish you're welcome? It's always a challenge, isn't it? All are welcome. So when we say in our church notice boards, all are welcome, again, do we mean just our sort are welcome, uh, but others are not, we're not so keen on? For example, if the church tends to be theologically liberal, uh, if someone with fundamentalist views comes in, are they given the cold shoulder? Uh, do we make sure they're not elected onto the PCC because they could be trouble? Uh, do we hope they'll just quietly go away because their views are rather, rather different? Or if we are uh, a right-wing fundamentalist church and if someone comes in with sort of left-wing political ideas, uh, once again, do we begin to uh, pull a face when they share something with us that we don't agree with? Do our eyes suddenly glaze over? Do we walk away and say to ourselves, I'll pray for you, that you will see the light? Uh, and come to believe what we believe, and then, and then we'll make you really welcome. And what about gays and lesbians and people whose lifestyles we may feel uh, are not compatible with the Bible or, or historic Christian understanding of ethics? Um, are we able to welcome them as people and see beyond what they are to who they are because among many groups of people may we well be the righteous, the prophets, and the little ones. As I say, this idea of welcome can be very tough. There are some people when they come into church, my heart sinks or ends up in my mouth. My heart gives a beat, not because I'm excited to see them, but because uh, I have a sense of foreboding and woe. And, and usually these are people who have caused conflict, either for me personally or for members of the congregation. And obviously there's something in me wants to protect the members of the church, and there's something in me wants to protect my own heart when I feel vulnerable. And that's probably why I don't like to put all welcome on the notice board. But that doesn't mean I'm right. It means there are things in my life, there are hearts that need to be healed, there are issues that need to be changed. Perhaps we need to be able to say all welcome and really mean it. But I mean with sincerity and not just because it sounds good. To be truly welcoming is to make no judgments on anyone, but nor does it mean agreeing with everything they do or say. But it does mean 
loving people as people and affirming people as people and allowing God to work in their lives in the ways that he wants to and in the time that he wants to to transform them and also to allow him to work in our lives what about the issues in our lives that need to be changed the things that make us unattractive to other people cold unwelcoming the things in our lives that turn them off the good news of the gospel and off Jesus and so following Jesus as his disciple means walking in a holy, gentle, self-forgetting lifestyle lived in community with people who are different to us. It means accepting one another and a costly learning of what it means to be like Jesus. And one of the signs that we are doing this is our willingness to open our arms to others not that they might become as we are or necessarily embrace our views, but that, that they and we might become as Jesus is and embrace his views and be transformed by his grace and embrace the values of his kingdom. Welcome. a stranger knocking at your door you let me in with no questions and no conditions when I was a sinner running from your grace you called me friend there were no outsiders to your love you're all welcome, there's grace enough When I have wandered alone Your cross is the open door There are no outsiders Though I'm not an outsider to your love
Pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Lord, we give you thanks that through these difficult times, we've been able to continue to be your church and to come before you in worship. We pray that you'll help us to show your love to this world that you so love. We give you thanks for church leaders throughout the world and for Ian here in Porchester. Lord, we pray that you'll guide them by your Holy Spirit. We pray for this world and our country as we come out of lockdown. Lord, we pray that the majority will continue to follow the guidance. We pray for those who've been affected physically, emotionally and financially. Lord, we pray that we will see many good things come out of this very difficult situation. We thank you, Lord, that you made each one of us in your image and that you died for each and every one of us. Lord, we think of those who have faced persecution in this world. We pray for the persecuted church and all who are persecuted because of their faith. We pray that you will change cultures and hearts, that all people will be treated fairly and justly, no matter what their gender, age, colour, race or religion. Lord, we pray that we will see your kingdom come. And Lord, we bring before you all those who are sick and suffering in any way. We pray, pray for all who care for others and all who mourn. Lord, we pray that they will know your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us this week for the later morning service. Thank you, Ian, Emma and Carol for helping out with the service as well. We miss you and we'd love to hear from you. So send us a message and let us know what you would like to see in the next service or the one after that for that matter. Take care and have a great week. dreams are falling all apart and all you're left with is a tired and broken heart I can tell by your eyes you think you're on your own but you're not alone have you heard of the one who can calm the raging sea Give sight to the blind, pull the lame up to their feet With a love so strong, it never lets you go No, you're not alone You will be safe in His arms You will be safe in His arms Cause the hands that hold the world This is the promise he made He will be with you always When everything is falling apart You will be safe in his arms Did you know that the voice that brings the dead 
to life Cause the very same voice that calls you now to rise So here and now He's calling you home You'll never be alone You will be safe in His arms You will be safe in His arms Cause the hands of all the world Are holding your heart This is the promise He made He will be with you always When everything is falling apart You will be safe in His To break our chains and set us free You will be safe in His arms You will be safe in His arms Cause the hands that hold the world Holding your heart This is the 